I did get all of them <laughs> just because, okay, I don't need to justify why I got things in this video. Hi guys, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. So I am so excited for today's video because this video combines two of my ultimate favorite things in the entire universe, stationary and BTS. I am going to be testing out every single BT21 stationary item that I could get my little hands on. I need to calm down. I'm very excited for this because it took me forever to make. Actually, first of all, if you don't know what BT21 is and you have no clue what I'm talking about, BT21 is basically these cartoon characters that the K-pop boy group BTS helped design with Line Friends and they have a bunch of merch and products with these characters on it and ever since I discovered that BT21 has pens and markers and notebooks and stationary products obviously you know the gears in my head were turning and I knew I had to do a video on it. I actually have been trying to make this video for the past two months but it actually took me quite a long time to acquire all of the items. Uh, basically I went on a couple trips to New York City for work and obviously while I was in New York I had to stop by the Line Friends store in Times Square and I got a bunch of stuff there. I actually did end up making a couple orders off of Amazon, the official Line Friends global Amazon so don't worry all of this stuff is official Line Friends and then also, luckily, one of my friends was on vacation and she had a layover stop in Incheon Airport, so she was able to pick up a couple things for me. So yeah, don't worry, I didn't buy all of this in one trip. <laughs> I think the cashier would have looked at me like I was crazy, which I am. But yeah, this was collected over the course of four or five different BT21 orders and trips. So I think I have pretty much everything. I mean, I'm sure there's a couple different stationary products that I'm missing, but I tried to get whatever I could. This stuff has been sitting in the corner of my apartment. I've been trying to keep my hands off of them and not try it out just because I wanted to do it on camera for you guys so I could show you my genuine first impressions of them. And then at the end of this video, I also have a giveaway. Obviously, since I was making all of these BT21 trips, I had to keep you guys in mind. ARMY has been so welcoming to me, so I wanted to give something back to all of my ARMY subscribers. If you are new to my channel and this is the first video that you're seeing, welcome. This is a place for all stationary lovers. It's a fun time, so you can hit that bell button down below to be notified every time I post a new video. And you can follow me over on my Instagram where I post a bunch more doodle stuff. I also sometimes draw BTS, so if you want to stand out with me, you can follow me on Instagram. But without further ado, let's get started because my impatient self cannot wait to try some of this stuff out. Let's do this. Alright, so these first items were actually the very first thing that I got. As soon as I walked in the store, I knew I had to get all of them and it's these notebooks. I think this is the B5 size. It's definitely not A5, which is the size that I'm the most familiar with. They're just regular composition notebooks. It's not spiral bound or anything. And they're actually each pretty thin. So these would be cute for like, I don't know, using one for every different subject. I did get all of them <laughs> just cause, okay, I don't need to justify why I got things in this video because we're all in the same boat. We're all army here. Sometimes when I talk to locals, I feel like I need to justify my crazy, but hopefully you guys accept me. But anyways, let's get into these notebooks. I actually haven't tried out any of them. Oh, by the way, I know I'm gonna get a ton of comments about this. Uh, my bias is an Amjoon, so. I tried to give equal love to all of the characters, but obviously I'm partial to Koya. Anyways, as I mentioned, the notebooks themselves are pretty thin, and on the inside, it's just regular lined paper. And they're actually not white pages, they're definitely more so of a cream, but I like the darkness of the lines, they're not too dark. And on the corner of each page, there's the character like Koi is just sitting down over there. The pages actually feel pretty nice. They have like a nice smoothness to them, but let's test it out. As much as I love like composition notebooks like this, I hate that when you open it, it's kind of hard to lay flat. I wish that they were like lay flat notebooks. The first pen that I'm gonna use to test it out is the Muji. This is just 038 and it's just a regular gel pen. Then we can see whether it, like the pages ghost or bleed or whatnot. The other pens that I'm gonna test out are the Sakura Pigma Microns. These are just regular fine liners. Okay, and then the final two pens that I'm gonna test out on this paper is the Tombow Funosuke brush pen and then just a regular Crayola Super Tips colored marker. There we go. So we have a couple different pen tests. Here is the reveal of the other side. Okay, so there's definitely some ghosting, but with the gel pens, which is probably what you would normally use these notebooks for, it's just for like writing notes and for journaling and stuff. So the Muji gel pen held up pretty well. So did the fineliner, but obviously I kind of knew this. 
the marker and the brush pen, they're a bit more inkier, so those ones uh, you can see a lot more clear. And the Crayola Super Tips over here actually started bleeding a little bit where I went over it a couple times. So that one's not really a surprise, but I'm actually very happy with how little ghosting there is on the gel pen. I actually just realized that I should probably try out using highlighters because highlighters are meant for paper like this. So I'm using my Zebra Mod Liner and seeing how that goes. Here's the, with the uh, Zebra Mod Liner, which is just a, a highlighter. And yeah, as I expected, the ghosting was a little bit better than the Crayola Super Tip. All right, so all in all, I'm pretty happy with this. I mean, they're just regular composition lined notebooks, so it's not like I was expecting any sketchbook high quality paper that you could paint on, but for just regular writing and school stuff, these are definitely good. And I like the feeling of the cover as well. They're like smooth and matte, but then where the writing and the characters are, it's a little bit more shiny. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Oh yeah, right there. I think they look cute all together. Like the color palette is very bright in BT21. These get a thumbs up for me. Out of a scale of 10, I think these are probably like 7.5. I would rate it a lot higher if it could take like Crayola Super Tips and brush pens a lot better. And I wish that they were lay flat, but other than that, pretty solid. Moving on to another notebook. I got this notebook, this one's spiral bound. I'm not sure if the paper's different from those ones. I'm sure it's not too different, but since it was a different style with the spiral and the cover's actually like cardboard, so it's pretty heavy duty, uh, I figured I would just test it out just in case it was different from this. This notebook I actually did start using ahead of time before this video because I've been using it to study Hangul. My mission for 2019 is to learn a little bit of Korean because I'm actually going to be traveling there in September. So obviously I wanna be a little bit prepared. So yeah, I've been using this to study. You can see my notes in here. And now that I've actually tried out these composition notebooks, cause before this video, I hadn't tested them out at all. I think what I've noticed is that the paper in this spiral bound notebook is a tiny, tiny bit thicker. The edges are also round, which I really like because notebooks tend to get banged up in the corners anyways. So I hate when notebooks have like straight edges. Very particular thing that most people probably would not notice. But yeah, I've been really liking this notebook for notes. The pen that I've been using on it is the Muji gel pen. And I've also been using some highlighters and some brush pens up here. And you can see the ghosting isn't too bad. I mean, there's still a tiny, tiny bit, but for the most part, it's actually pretty good. And I think it held up a lot better with the markers than the other notebooks. You can see in the bottom corner here that it has all of the characters. And then obviously the cover is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's just all of the characters falling down on this like light blue background. I think this one I prefer over these composition notebooks um, just because it fixes a couple of the issues that I had. It lays flat since it's a spiral bound and the paper is a little tiny bit better. So I'd probably give this one like a nine out of 10. BT21 really snapped with this. All right, moving on. I think these next ones are the last notebooks. So these are the spiral ring notebook. And as you can see, they're pocket sized. I only have three of them because they were actually out of stock when I went, but I think these ones were the ones that my friend got me from Korea. So yeah, I have Tata, Van, and Ma. And I'm keeping two of them in the package because I'm going to be giving away them. So let's just open Van. All right, so here it is. I'm hoping that it's the same material and paper as this. So far, it does feel very similar in terms of the cover and the actual rings. It has like the same matte, smooth texture. Okay, yeah, it's the same color of paper, like that nice cream paper with the gray lines on it. Sometimes when you see lined paper, the lines are too dark or too thick, but these ones are nice and clean and they kind of fade in the background with your writing. Let me just do a little comparison here. It's not the same. The bigger spiral notebook definitely has a little bit more of a thickness. I would say that this smaller notebook is probably closer to the composition notebooks, but just to be sure, let's do another test. I'm gonna use the same pens so we can keep things consistent. And then when you flip it over, it's very similar to the composition notebook results. But I mean, I'm not as mad at these notebooks bleeding just because with this, it's kind of the type of thing where you're just gonna like scribble down a reminder and then like rip it out or something. It's not so much like you keep it in the notebook. So the nature of the notebook kind of like makes it okay if that makes sense but let me just quickly do the same test on the big spiral notebook this one just because i realized i didn't do it yet you can see here this is the crayola super tips on the composition notebook and then this is the crayola super tips on 
the spiral one. Obviously, it's always hard to pick up this stuff on camera, but in person, the one that has the worst bleeding and ghosting is probably these two. Uh, again, I think they're just the same paper. But something about this big spiral notebook is definitely different from these two because the paper is actually a little bit whiter now that I see them all compared together and the bleeding and ghosting is a lot less. All right, so those were the mini little notebooks. Probably gonna have to give it the same score as the composition notebook just because the paper is exactly the same. So seven, seven and a half. All right, next up we have something that is extremely on brand for me. These are the planners. There is a weekly one and then a monthly planner. I actually didn't see these at all in the New York store either of the times that I went. These were the ones that my friend got me from Incheon Airport. So I'm not sure if this is like a Korea exclusive. All right, let's start with the weekly planner. First impressions, it's very wide, like short and wide. The cover is like this clear plastic. Uh, RJ, Mong, Shuki, and Van are on the back. I feel like this would be good for someone who isn't into getting a full-on planner or doesn't want to commit to bullet journaling because it's a very simple week-long layout. Probably not the best for someone who has very, very busy weeks like students or if you have a very intense job or something because there isn't that much planning space. This is probably gonna have to knock a point off for me personally. I'm very particular about my planners and my stationary items. I prefer having planners that start the week with Monday, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but this one starts on Sunday. I know it depends on like where you are in the world, but for my whole life, I've always started my weeks on Mondays. This is cute. I like it. There, You can see the characters on it as well. I love that they <laughs> include that on there. The lines are very light, which is hard to show on camera, but in person, you can see them pretty well. And then something I noticed when I was flipping through is that the other side of the page is actually grid paper. All right, let's take a look at the monthly planner. I'm assuming it's going to be pretty much the same as the weekly planner. You flip open and it's just an empty monthly layout. Uh, since they're not numbered themselves, you just have to fill in the numbers, which means you can start at any time of the year. There's a side column here for notes and stuff. So with this one on the back, you get lined paper. The back of the monthly calendar is like this light yellow color and you can see all the characters as well. Monthly calendar has 24 pages and then the weekly one has 60. So for both of them, there's actually enough to fill up a whole year and then some. I mean, 24 months, that's two years. So technically this monthly calendar could last you two years if you wanted it to. I wanted to do a pen test on one of them. The paper actually does feel a lot smoother than the other standard notebooks, it's like a little bit shinier as well, but you flip it over. Whoa, do you guys see that? There's like barely any ghosting at all. They should use this paper in the notebook. Let me try scribbling a lot more though. Still pretty good. Wow, line. I mean, you can see it where I like really scribbled in hard, but like even the brush pen, you can't really see it all over there. Wow, they should really use this paper for the notebooks. That would be my suggestion to line. I feel like you wouldn't do as much coloring or writing on these. It'd just be like standard gel pen writing. But in the actual notebooks, like people like to use highlighters and markers and stuff. So I feel like it would be better to use this paper in those notebooks. I like these. I think it's hard because me personally, I would not get that much use out of these just because I have my bullet journal and I'm very set in that system, but I can definitely see someone getting a lot of use out of these. A solid eight, eight and a half, that type of thing. The only thing that I would change is starting the weekly spread on a Monday, but again, that's just a personal preference. And I also wish there was a little bit more space for the weekly planner. I mean, they could just make this a tiny bit longer or a bit wider and give people a lot more space. You just kind of have to have tiny writing to use these. Let's move on to the fun stuff, which in my opinion are the pens. I'm gonna start off with these. These are the BT21 gel pens. They're 0.4 and I got all of the different characters. Now I'm not sure if the color of the pen indicates the color of the ink, or if it's just a black pen, I don't know. Let's give Mong some shine. I'm gonna take off a little plastic thingy that it comes with. Oh, okay, I think I just spoiled it for myself. <laughs> it's black. It's definitely a gel pen, very inky and wet, but it's pretty smooth. So these are the type of pens that I like to use for writing down tasks in my bullet journal or for taking notes, that type of thing. Not too thin, not too thick. I really like these. I feel like out of all of the stuff that I've tried so far, I'd probably get the most use out of these just because it's just like a standard black gel pen. I love how like inky and black it is. I don't know, I find it very satisfying to write with. The only thing is that I wish it was a little less cheap feeling. Like 
it does definitely feel like plastic and very light, almost like a toy, which I guess it pretty much is a toy. What do I rate these? A nine out of 10? Yeah, I think these deserve a nine out of 10 as well. I wish I was still in middle school or elementary school or something, cause I would definitely be the type of person to walk around with all of these in my cute little pencil case and flex on all my friends. The next pen that I'm gonna be testing out, these are the 0.4 millimeter plush pen. So as you can see, there's a little plush at the top. It's super, super cute. This one's Chimmy. Then I have Tata and RJ again. I'm gonna be giving these ones away. So I only opened Chimmy, but let's test this baby out. I actually left the test from the clickable gel pens just so we can compare to see how this one is different or if it's the same. All right, right off the bat, the tip of the pen is very, very thin. Here is the comparison between the clickable one. I guess the whole point of these is to put the plush on the back while you're writing. It's like, you know, in Clueless when she has like the furry pom-pom pen. Wow, they're very, very different. This pen is definitely a lot thinner and it's actually a ballpoint pen, which I was not expecting. I don't typically like ballpoint pens as much as gel pens. I find that they're just not as smooth as gel pens. And you can see that it's not as dark as the gel pens and it skips a little bit. Ooh, I don't like it. It's like scratchy. Uh, you can see that it gets like darker and lighter depending on the ink levels of the pen. It's not as even as the gel pens. I'm gonna have to rate this one like a four. I was thinking of giving it an extra half point just to be nice, but I can't be biased. This ain't it, chief. Yeah, I don't know if I'm actually gonna use this. I think it's just gonna look cute on my desk or something. <laughs> these next two are the things that I was probably the most excited for, and I got these online as well. I actually didn't see them in the store. These are the BT21 color twin pen set and color highlighter set. They come in these cute little clear plastic pencil cases boxes which is what attracted me to them i always like like pen sets i think they're so satisfying let's crack open into the highlighters first there's only five different colors is it one character per pen that is so weird i don't know why bt21 does this you would think that they would want to like put all of the characters in the sets but there's only one character per highlighter here you only get chimmy Cookie, Mong, Koya, and Tata. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I want all of them. I feel like they could have even put like two on one, like maybe put another character on the other side or something. I can forgive them if these highlighters are good. So right off the bat, it looks like both ends are chisel tip highlighters. All right, so this is the Chimmy one. Ooh, whoa, that's a very unique yellow highlighter. Usually yellow highlighters are like fluorescent, but this one is like a nice yellow. It almost just looks like a regular marker. And then the other side, oh, there we go. That's like a more classic highlighter color. This one is the one with cookie on it. Oh my God, that color is so pretty. I don't even own a color highlighter like that. I actually don't even think I own a marker color like that. All of these colors are very unique and they seem to all be very fresh and inky. Okay, so those are all of the highlighter colors. I think my favorite would have to be this magenta color. I feel like I just don't own any marker like that. I don't know if some of these can really be classified as highlighters. I might just consider them as regular markers. Like that blue would definitely be hard for writing to show up underneath. Maybe even this red and orange and the magenta as well. But the other colors are really pretty. I like the lilac as well. Okay, let's see on the other side. Not too much bleeding. Even with the lighter shade, it doesn't really get too much darker when you overlay it on top of itself, which is something that I get annoyed. I hate when you highlight something and then when you go back to like maybe extend whatever you're highlighting or go over it, it just gets darker and then it looks uneven. Just to confirm really quickly, I'm gonna test it out on this, the spiral bound notebook just to see how it holds up in here. So you guys can kind of see if you wanted to pair the BT21 notebook with the highlighters. So I'll use the dark blue color, fuchsia color, and then we'll do a little scribbles. Okay, yeah. The darker colors definitely bleed a little bit, but overall, not too bad. I think these are really, really good. I like the color selection, and I like that you pretty much get 10 different highlighters. Very unique, and um, the ink is actually very solid and vivid and bright. So I think I'm gonna have to give these a 9.5. That's how much I like it. I feel like these just feel a lot better quality than the gel pens. Like, you know how I mentioned that the gel pens feel a little bit like a toy and 
kind of light and cheap. These definitely have some weight to them and feel a bit more expensive. And that's also kind of including the fact that it comes with this little case with it as well, which these did not. These were sold individually. I do wish that there was at least all of the characters on them because if you're buying a set, I feel like that's what you would want. 9.5. That highlighter set is making me very excited to test out this next set. These are the BT21 Color Twin Pens. Packaging is cute. It looks like candy canes. Here's the difference between the two. See when you open it up. See, this is what I wanted with the highlighters. You actually get two characters per pen. So this one, there's Koyo over here and Chimmy. So at least all of the bases are covered. I don't know why they couldn't do that with the highlighter. Anyways, weird. Okay, so it looks like one side is actually like a thin tipped fine liner and then the other side is a highlighter. So I'm sure those highlighters are very similar to the highlighter set. If these ones are good, then it probably would be better to get this set because then you get different pens, different colors, as well as highlighters. But let's test it out and see. So we'll start out with this one. This is the one with Koya and Chimmy on it. Okay, so it's an orange highlighter. Oh, like a lime green color. It's actually a lot thinner than I expected. And it's like a plastic nib fine liner, which you guys know I love. I love using my Sakura Pigma Micron plastic nib, and this is very, very similar. Let me actually show you a comparison. So this is the Sakura Pigma Micron plastic nib fine liner, and then this is the BT21. So you can see they're not like your classic felt tip fine liner. The reason why I like them is because they're a bit more durable. So I'm sure that these will last a while. I like the vibrancy of the colors. They're like bright enough, but they're not too bright so that they look very childish. I feel like they're kind of like classy colors, if that makes sense. All right, so those are all of the different colors and that comes with the set. If you wanna compare it with the colors that come in the highlighter set, there you go. Those are probably the most similar. The green one doesn't show up in the highlighter set. The orange is also a bit different. Like it's a bit more of a yellow orange than this orange. And then that weird navy blue color. Pros for these, again, came with very unique colors. The only thing is I wish it didn't come with that weird navy blue, but nonetheless, I would have to probably give it the same score as the highlighters. 9.5 for both of these. I wonder if it's gonna get any better from here because these are definitely my favorite so far. We're getting down to the last couple of things here. I have no clue how long this video is gonna be. I feel like it's been way too long already, but I promise we're almost there. I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but I remember growing up in school, if you saw anyone who had these like multicolor pens, they were automatically the coolest kid in class. And I just remember being so jealous of the kids who did have them because I never had them. I just always had like the plain boring single color pens. I feel like maybe that carried over into my adult life and that's why I have an excessive amount of stationery now is just because I was compensating for not having these multicolor pens as a child. <laughs> Anyways, back to the pens. This is the four color pen. I have the Koya one because of course I have the Koya one. And that's another thing that I remember being so jealous of because the kids who did have these pens would always like click these and fiddle with them and hearing the clicks was just like a constant reminder that I didn't have these pens. <laughs> Let's test it out. I mean, I'm assuming it's just gonna be a regular ballpoint pen. You know how I feel about ballpoint pens. They're not the greatest, so I'll try to put my feelings aside. It's actually a lot thinner than I expected, but it's definitely not as thin as the blush pen. That's a comparison. It's a lot smoother than the plush pen. Like if I had to choose a ballpoint pen out of the two, the plush pen and this one, I would definitely choose this. But I think ballpoint pens are just not my jam. I don't know, like it just barely shows up. Oh, sorry, I have like ink all over my hands. The actual writing is smooth, I have to admit. It's probably equally as smooth as the gel pens, but it's just that the ink is not nearly as dark or saturated, so it doesn't look as satisfying to write with. But let's test out this other color here. Yeah, I like that color. <laughs> I feel like you don't typically see ballpoint pens with like this blue, light blue shade. Next color, green. Maybe my mind is changing. I like these colors. The final color is pink. Let's see how that one turns out. Ooh, okay. I definitely like these three colors more than the black because the black is just like standard indigo ink. It's not even black. Okay, I judged this a little too harshly from the get-go just because I have a vendetta against ballpoint pens apparently, but what did I give these ones? A nine? That seems like too much now that I think about it. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna knock it down just because after trying everything out, these are definitely way better than the gel pens. 
so this was an eight this one a seven which is like what like a c the final writing utensil that i have is this mechanical pencil this mechanical pencil is 0.5 lead i don't have too high hopes for this just because it does feel very very cheap it like feels like i could break it if i press too hard but we'll see i need to stop judging books by its cover so let's test it out it's very solid once you run out of this lead then you would have to refill it with your own lead. So it just kind of depends on what lead you use, right? Like if you fill it with bad lead, then obviously it's not gonna be as good. I don't know if I like how light it feels. I wish you guys could witness how light it feels because it's kind of throwing me off that it feels so cheap, but then the pencil is pretty good. So, I mean, yeah, it's not the worst thing I've ever tried in the world and it's also not the best, but just for standard writing, I see nothing wrong with it. For rating, I think I'll have to rate it a step down from the multicolor pen, so I'll give this one a, a six. All right, we made it through all of the writing utensils. Yay. Last two things aren't writing utensils. They are these. This is Chimmy Sticky Notes, and this is Cookie Washi Tape. When I saw this washi tape, I pretty much died. I got the washi tape from the New York Line Friends store. They only had Cookie, unfortunately. I wish they had all of the characters, because you know your girl would get all of them. So there's 30 sheets apparently. And they actually flip this way, which is so weird. You would think they would flip upwards. I don't know, typically that's what you see with sticky notes. How do you test out sticky notes? I'll test how sticky they are and if they fall off. Cause that's always the most annoying thing with sticky notes is when they're not sticky enough and they just like fall off of everything. I'm gonna try to see if it can fall off. Feels pretty sturdy. The real test is when you remove it a couple times and then see if it still sticks, so. I'll do that. We're still hanging on there. Chimmy's still going. Um, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what I was expecting with this. You can't really mess up sticky notes, can you? Finally, the cookie washi tape. I'm really curious to see the pattern. <gasps> oh my god, that is so cute. This chunk is pretty much what's repeated. There's like four different cookie poses and then the lettering that says cookie. I think that's cute. I wish I had all of the other characters. <laughs> Amanda, you have enough stationery as it is. All right, everyone, so we made it to the end. We tested out all of the BT21 stationery items that I could find. Personally, I had so much fun filming this video and hopefully someone else out there enjoyed it as well. I hope this video was at least a little useful. I mean, my goal with making this was to help any armies out there who were thinking about getting any of these stationary items because I know that when you're buying stationary, not just BT21 stationary, but just stationary in general, it can be a little hard to commit to buying something because typically you're not able to test something out, especially when you're buying things online. But I also wanted to say, if you guys like this type of video, where I test out a full range of stationary products. Let me know, maybe I can do some more for different brands in the future. Anyways, this is probably the part that you guys were most anticipating, the giveaway prizes. Two different prize packs, but they're pretty much the same. It just differs with the characters and everything. So this prize pack number one over here, you're getting three of the gel pens. So you'll get Tata, Mang, and Cookie. And you're also gonna get the RJ multicolor pen. Three of the mechanical pencils. Even though these were not my favorite item that I tried out from all of the BT21 stuff, I still think it's cute, so I included it in the prize. Uh, I also included one of the little detective notebooks. And you will also get the color highlighter set. This was my favorite item from the whole video, so I'm very excited for an army to receive that. And then prize pack number two over here, you're gonna get uh, four of the gel pens, three mechanical pencils, the Tata plush pen, Tata detective notebook, and then you're gonna get the BT21 color twin pen set. Those are the two prize packs. All of the rules for entering are gonna be in the description box below. Obviously it's gonna be international because armies are all over the world. So I wanna give all of you guys a chance to win some awesome BT21 prizes. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap up this video now because I feel like I've been talking way too much. The sun is actually setting right now, which is why it's a little dark in here, but that's how long I've been sitting here playing around with BT21 stationery. The question of the day is what is your favorite BT21 character. Personally, I'm Team Koya, so let me know. I hope you have an amazing day. Keep doodling, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye, everyone!